cloaked in folds of midnight water side by side we sons and daughters we set forth for no king's orders but we'll sail together that be I, I don't remember what the back of the ship is called but she was back there and then she climbed up the and app? she met i guess the back <laughs> <laughs> Um, she, uh, climbed up there, and when she reached, when she, you know, rolled over the railing up there, she, she, Captain Christopher Valens, he stood there, and he, uh, her, that, um, what was it? You know, that she, he was, um, sent by her father, basically, and she pulled her pistol on him she immediately you know pulled the trigger she was thinking it would work of course you know when gunpowder gets wet it doesn't work anymore and he basically called her stupid because she she tried to pull a pistol you know the pistol trigger for something that was wet and it wouldn't work and then right um he she had been topless because butcher had wanted her to appear you know like a woman on the ship so she you know, had stripped her shirt off and made it look like she was a hostage instead of what it, what he was. And um, they had discovered that it was her. So he didn't want to hurt her because he couldn't. He had to bring her back alive. So they had to survive this battle and then take her with them. So he stepped forward and he basically cupped her breast and had a good feel of it. And Betsy, she carries daggers down in her boots. They're always there. There's two of them. She carries one in each boot. And she basically let him speak his mind, and she reached down and grabbed it out, and then she jabbed it into him. And uh, he wasn't expecting that. And but then... Her uh, first real kill at that point. I mean, yeah. she, had, she had come close to killing people before with the Izzy incident and so forth, but this was her first real pirate kill. Yeah, she uh, she took that man's life. She, uh, it wasn't a big battle. Basically, you know, she had stabbed him in a vital organ, and it, it took him. And then when he was down and stuff, she, you know, she came over on top of him and just jabbed him again. But, and then, oh, she also, she, she removed the hand that he used to touch her breast with. She wasn't happy about that. And so after this battle, Butcher was pretty wounded. Um, he, he wasn't feeling himself. He wasn't doing well. He got ambushed by like three different people. And uh, that led to, that led to Betsy having to tend to his wounds for a while, right? Yeah, which she, she did. She stitched him up and, uh, you know, she took care of him and stuff, you know, kept his bandages clean and things. Um, he was down. He was, like, out of it for, like, three days. And uh, she she did wait. You know, she waited beside him to till he woke up. But he, you know, she couldn't stay there for long. She had to go out and, um, you know, do her job out there. Um, if Which I'm not mistaken. Which uh, led the crew making her a temporary captain. I was about to get to that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, if I'm not mistaken... They referred to her as a co-captain because she was due to be his wife and they needed order from someone that could, you know, tell them what to do. Usually it would be the first mate, which would be H Hoda. Hoda, Ho right. Hoda. Yeah, it would be him that would make the call, but he had like a, I don't know, something came over him where he just kind of just needed he needed some kind of guidance, you know, not just him telling what to do, but he needed someone else to tell him what to do as well. So he he did allow Betsy during this time to tell him what to do. They were on their way to Charleston, so and that plan didn't change. They were going to Charleston because they needed to be there at this at a certain time because Butcher needed to catch this ship that was going to be there. Right, so it was crucial HMS that they reached Becca, which is as I stated in the last video, a completely very real ship that transported a 
banished and exiled priest to Poland. And during this transfer, they stopped by the colonies to collect all the artifacts that had been held there by the churches. And the ship was loaded down with these artifacts. Now, this is all very real. This all happened. It was all researched and so forth and just kind of combined into one ship instead of multiple ships. But uh, that's where the whole concept of the Becca comes from. They, uh, she didn't change that. She knew that Butcher wanted that ship, so she kept them, or at least towed Hyota to keep them en route to Charleston, which they were like a week and a half out from that. So Butcher was also very complaining about his stitches as well. Which Wasn't led it? to him having to get all his wounds cauterized because he wouldn't stop Bitching. puffing up his chest and walking around and reopening all his wounds constantly. It was it was the only choice that she had left. He didn't want to wait around for the wounds to heal from the stitching, which takes quite a while. So she was like, this is the only the only choice. You're just going to have to tough it out and let's do this. So she did it. She closed all of them up. She removed the stitching and she used she used her knives, her daggers from her boots. Those those things. I'm telling you, she keeps them with her everywhere she goes. <laughs> they seem to be useful. Right. And this, after all this happened and things started to calm down, aside from their argument again, which they had another one of, I mean, these, these people's dysfunctional relationship is, is on a whole nother level. But this led to the wedding, which was just before the Charleston incident. And the wedding was unique, right? I took a lot of uh, historical information on what I could find from weddings, which is not an easy thing to do, um, given how they tend to shift the focus if you type pirate wedding you'll you'll see what i mean you get a whole different uh search result so it it was very difficult to find information and and i ended up using a story about blackbeard and how he married his women and that's kind of the direction that i went with that yeah they they did get married it was a beautiful wedding might i add um he, he even got fancy. She was expecting him just to wear his same old drabby clothing that he always wore. But no, he, he got himself in like a nice like black get up with a little bit of red in it. It's kind of nice. She right. also, she had spent some time to uh, craft her own dress. Usually in that time period would be the mother that would make the dress for the bride. But her mother was not present. So she had to do it herself, and she used Judith as well. Judith helped her a little bit, but she, um, she made it, and it was it was it was a nice dress. She looked like a woman for once. She, you know, she dresses a lot like a man because she she don't want to be targeted as something as easy, I suppose, an easy target for men to take. She also don't want to be like um something that because. She knows that she's a weakness for Butcher, and she don't want, you know, to display that for people to use her against him, so. And that kind of led to some traditions, like the uh, purging of sins, which is done by Davy Jones acknowledging the wedding and taking the sins down to the bottom of the ocean by throwing the captain overboard and making him strip out of his garbs while he's in the water. Um... And Betsy wasn't too happy about that one. She wasn't expecting that. She she thought she was going to be raped. Because <laughs> they just rushed in while they were about to get it on. And I, she, they, she's like, no, wait. What are you doing? And she realized what they were doing. And I mean, she even threatened him. She's like, y'all touch me and I'll kill you. <laughs> and after... Funny. After the whole wedding thing took place, things started to get back to normal. They had about a week or so of normality, finally. And they finally reached the shorelines of Charleston, which led to them parking offshore. I had to look up a map. There's a small inlet about 10 miles off from uh, Charleston at that time that was surrounded by 
woodlands and they parked their ship off that they ported off that and used dinghies to get into port and butcher really had this whole plan set up that it was gonna you know it was gonna work he had this uh you know go into charleston stake out the hms becca get on board the becca uh sell it out like it's the most natural thing in the world the problem is is that charleston was already assaulted by pirates and so they had a very strict pirate policy and so those that mimic or look like pirates stand out really really strongly in charleston after the attack of blackbeard this became pretty standard practice and they were hanging pirates left and right a lot of people were uh prosecuted for being a pirate that were not pirates so they they really took out their frustrations on anybody that had an inkling to be a pirate and this shut down the port to piracy pretty quickly. They also had a heavy influx of naval ships that patrolled the area. And so when Butcher went into port, he got caught pretty quickly. He did. He got captured very quickly. Um, I mean, it. her father was also there. His ships as well were there. Um, so, you know... He, he didn't stand a chance. And he told Betsy to stay on the ship. Which also, Wilcox had also departed from the ship at this time as well. She, um, she dismissed Wilcox after um, she convinced Butcher to not kill him. After it was him that kicked her. So, you know, yeah, she, again, he let him live. And uh, she told Wilcox that it was in his best interest that he needed to get the, off the ship. So he did. He left. They had their goodbyes. He was in land. Wilcox saw the whole capture go down. And he brought it back to the Bloody Bones. And he told Betsy, he said, hey, the captain's been captured. And and then, uh, what else was it? That, you know... That he thinks that, you know, they should go in and try and save him, you know, he's still, you know, he's the captain, you know, and at first, Hoda was not too keen on the idea of that, because he knew that there was a good chance whoever captured him was coming for them as well, or trying to find them, so he was like, mm, okay, we'll do it, but... Right. We got to do it a little differently than what we usually would do. And with Betsy's so, espionage skills, she she got a chance to reintroduce Wilcox, who was pretty much a dead man walking at that point in Butcher's eyes. Uh, and we introduced Oliver Pikeman for the first time into this series. And uh, Oliver Pikeman was as sadistic a red coat as they come when it comes to torture and information gathering. They were women. <laughs> they were the Scarlets. 